In this video, watch how a junior trader profitably traded a Chinese company accused of fraud by reading the tape. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafuri, co-founder of SME Capital, and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and The Playbook. Click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos that we're producing for you in the trading community. In this video, a junior trader presents how he used his reading the tape skills to make profitable long and short trades in a Chinese company accused of fraud. Uh, so this is gonna be going over a trade from a couple of Thursdays ago. Uh, this was uh, during the LK day where we saw a dramatic pull in or crash um, from around $25, $26 all the way down to $4. The main part of this trade is going to be going over trading the backside and trading or the uh, rollover in this trade, but uh, I'm also going to detail kind of how this trade set up, uh, beginning with kind of like the bounce back in the uh, latter part of the pre-market and then how it kind of followed up going into $10 where um, I started this, uh, this strategy. So just kind of a uh, big picture here, um, LK um, is a highly shorted name with uh, suspicions of fraud, part of the group of Chinese stocks that investors have been suspicious of for a while. Um, and they uh, came out this morning with a internal investigation showing that there were fraudulent sales. So kind of confirming the belief of many short sellers that this company is a fraud. And we saw that this stock was down 80% on extreme volume. And the name actually started out basically flat like any other day. And then it was steadily falling the whole pre-market. Um, so we were, um, I'm pretty sure that around 8.30, we were around $25, $26, the stock fell down, and then we just went all the way down to $4 with little to no uptick. And the volume was uh, very extreme. Okay, and then with this, if we just go back just really quickly. So with LK, right? This is a yeah. Chinese. This is a Chinese stock, and then automatically, when people are hearing fraud, you know, it's sell now, ask qu questions later. Usually, what we yeah. see, and people are, and these stocks are known to be somewhat fraudulent compared to what we, what you know, what we see in the you know standard market itself. On exactly. Um, so, just kind of what the intraday fundamentals were. Uh, the stock fell 80% on very strong volume and effectively a straight line until it found a base at four, which is where we saw kind of a change in character for the name, where we saw institutions starting to actually cover their position. At this point, the, uh, the stock started creeping back up to $5 uh, very slowly. Um, it definitely was not kind of a V bottom or something with that much momentum. Um, so it was clear that it was just kind of shorts supporting the bid and covering their position. Um, and there was a clear a change in character, um, you know, in the final 30 minutes of the uh, pre-market where you get this violent move down and then kind of we see that that uh, basing process. Um, and then uh, we saw during this basing process that there were higher lows the whole time, showing that the bid was getting stronger and stronger. And there was a good chance of short slacking in profits on the open. Uh, so just in brief, the ATR was 4.4, the average daily volume is 20 million, and the ARBO was 70. So obviously very much in play and uh, something that there was definitely going to be a lot of, of opportunity for. You ever traded a setup like this before? Uh, so no, live, I think this is the first time where we've ever seen something come down 80% um, and then actually trade that uh, following it. Um, but as far as what the actual strategy was on, on this trade, yes, it's actually one of my better setups to date is this SSR uh, decommanding strategy. It's basically showing you that sellers are now fully in control. And that is clearly seen by the by the asks uh, stacking up, which I'll go through um, uh, once we get to the uh, trade management. If you wanna learn three real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing right now at the top right hand corner of your screen. 
That's gonna open up this free registration page in the new window, so don't worry, you're not gonna lose this video. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. Yeah, so just kind of in brief, you can just see the uh, daily chart. The stock was trading normally b before this day, and then suddenly we get a day where there's, uh, you know, 250 million shares traded. Um, so obviously, uh, very much in play. And you can just see kind of how dramatic this fall was. So this is the uh, a basing pattern that was showing the fact that there was a change in character in this stock. You can kind of see how uh, there was that violent move down and then we started to put in higher lows and just kind of seeing this uh, wedge pattern that you, you can just see how it started to take out this uh, downtrend line and then we started to, to actually get a little bit more aggressive. Um, so this is just showing you that there are the shorts covering. Um, and as far as just kind of what- You can just go back, I'm sorry to Max yeah. interrupt, but one of the key things that we're looking for, right, is a change in pattern, right? And yes. was this too, as you said, you know, in the final 30 minutes from, from nine o'clock to 9.30, we saw that basing action, right? The yes. Stimulation kind of, you know, and the fact that, um, what was the short float on this one again? I believe that, it, that this was something in like the mid twenties. Mid twenties, okay, mid twenties. And after being up, I mean, being down 80%, this is a possibility where a lot of people are covering as you described before. Yes, and as well as people that, that were probably shorting as well on the way down in the uh, pre-market. So like that's also a, a possibility as well. So uh, just kind of uh, my trade management from the, uh, the long side and just kind of where I could have done better. So the first trade for me was when it broke five and and it, it was um, holding this level. I mean, you can clearly see if you were like uh, watching the tape that that bid would not break. And then we started to kind of accelerate past 520, kind of like moving into the first limit up. So for me, once we started to, to see a confirmation of this, what I was doing was trading for that limit up, you know, assuming that the longs were in control and the shorts were going to fully uh, cover this and that, you know, if I can take this trade into the uh, limit up, most likely shorts are not done covering and it's likely that this stock would open higher than where it was um, halted. And then once I kind of saw the turn on the tape is when uh, I would close out that position. So I closed out this position at $6, where we started to see the the offer stack at 601, 602. And that was- uh, Sorry to interrupt, Mac. Sorry yeah. about that, just to interrupt your flow, but just wanna um, just ask you a quick question. Do you think like the recent trading or experience that you've had trading some of the travel sector names like CCLs, Norwegian, the RCLs, um, with these limit up, limit down scenarios that helped you trade this a little bit better? Absolutely. I mean, I basically created this this kind of um, just like limit up strategy, limit down strategy, SSR decrement strategy in March by trading these these uh, cruise line names. Um, I mean, like before March, I would say that uh, that I would usually shy uh, away from trading names on SSR, and now it's become one of my best um, setups. Is actually trading stocks that are you know on SSR because when you don't see those offers stack up or you see them, but they're being taken out. It's a clear sign to you that these shorts are not strong enough to hold that stock down. And rather like you should be looking for the long setup and vice versa, uh, when you see that the bids are being uh, decremented and the offers are stacking, it's usually a sign that now the shorts have taken over the short term momentum and then you just kind of ride both waves out. Um, but just kind of how I could have traded uh, this better, uh, I don't think that I saw the full potential for this to possibly double within the first few minutes. And I, I definitely could have kept some versus my, or uh, versus the first like, limit up price. So you'll see that that, that it, it never does come back down to test that 550, which is where it was um, halted. I believe it was like 555. And just by uh, keeping on a small feeler position, uh, I could have, just like use like the low of every candle and possibly gotten an extra three, four dollars. And I think that kind of seeing this and seeing what a true short squeeze looks like, especially after a big move down was definitely very educational and something that I'll take for the next trade. Um, I do know that I did take kind of a similar setup by 
buying like momentum in, into each like limit up pretty defined risk reward i would put my stop at one cent below the, the uh, last price of uh, ones like the stock was um halted and as you can see they basically all opened up and then followed through to the upside uh the one thing is that you do have to enter this trade before the uh, limit up price is reached because you won't be able to get in uh, on the ask um, uh, once you see the LRP show up on the montage unless it takes that out. And the only reason why it would uh, take that out, I believe, is due to uh, a time factor. So it, um, without that, uh, you would miss the trade. So there's definitely some tape reading that goes into just kind of just like making sure that you're a risk is is very much defined. Um, so now I'm just flipping over to the short side, which is where I made most of the money on this trade. So uh, once like, the stock crossed 10, there was a clear change in character. So what like, we saw was that it broke out to 10. And then I believe that the offers were like 10.05, uh, 10.10, just kind of in that area. But we didn't see that the bids also were stepping up. So there were people that were trying to sell the stock in like the mid teens, but there were no buyers there. And then slowly you would start to, to see those offers come down and stack. And I remember that I first tried to get in on the midpoint, someplace between 10 and 10.05, uh, but I wasn't uh, successful in getting filled, but I was successful in getting filled at 7.75.5, which is uh, the midpoint between 75.76 and then between 85 and, and 86. And the way that that I was managing this trade was, uh, to me. So, quick yeah. question. Also, sorry, yeah, to interrupt. But as far as <clears throat> I know, you used the um the midpoint on this, right? Yeah. Um, do you think, as far as on your the execution side, that you reacted fast enough to see the turn in the stock, or you just were kind of just waiting to see because this was the first time you're saying that the pattern kind of changed. So yeah. were you just waiting more for a little bit more confirmation or was this, you know, this is it, I'm seeing the pattern changing. Now I'm going to try to um, hit it here at this point. I think that I was pretty quick uh, just because it really didn't set up, you know, until you started seeing like the bids hold at 10, you know, and not step up because like you want a very clear level to, to like risk again. So like, for example, like once it breaks $10, it shouldn't reclaim it. So I immediately put like my stop at $10 once getting failed because like my thinking was that, okay, uh, there was just this change. Shorts have now uh, taken full control. Most likely if this trade uh, works out, this should go limit down because you know, like there should be shorts that are coming back in, those that are covered already close it out. And also just like thinking about it, if let's say like you still wanted to close out some, uh, you know, of your short, you're less likely to be as willing to close it out when it's already up 150% from the morning low than like when you were at four or five dollars. So just like thinking about that side as well, about what the odds were of there being that much more demand. And basically every time that it went like limit up, it just increased my odds of being right once I thought that I saw the turn. Um, so what I did was I got in, I kind of just um, had my share set at a default level. Um, and then I was filled once at the 85 cent. And basically like when this is going on, I'm just trying to, to like smack in. So I'm just um, just uh, using my hotkeys and just basically hoping to, to get filled for as much as possible. Um, and I was filled at those two prices. And then what my trade management was, was basically waiting for the first uptick. So there really was no uptick until $7. I think that there was a slight uptick after the first uh, uh, limit or a, a limit down reopen. However, I didn't see it or it was too quick to actually visualize. So I didn't close it there. Um, but you know, I mean like the stock first went limit down at, at 896. It opened up straight to around 792, opened up. And then when it went down to the $7, you could see that the offers were not stacking in as significant a size. So I mean, like uh, you would see the offers stack with sizes in the thousands from the 10 all the way down through the second limit down haul. But then uh, once we, we like started getting back down to that $7 area, like the size was maybe 100 or 200. And for a stock that's trading millions of shares per minute, it doesn't take much for someone just to come in and buy 
20, 30, 50,000 shares and lift the offers. So that's the first sign to you to be ready to close out this trade. And I closed it basically all the size out at around 715. Um, and it makes sense for there to be um, some sort of a, you know, a demand back in the $7 area. As you can see that blue line, that's the 21 EMA. So it's just kind of a moving average indicator as well as VWAP at six. So the odds for this to go that much further are quite slim. And really, uh, once you start getting down to that point, your risk reward for holding this short or pressing it is probably not as good as let's say when it, you know, it was in like the nines. Um, so just kind of the uh, tapering, just kind of like just uh, summarizing everything that I was going over. Basically um, on the upside, uh, uh, the, the stock was slowly grinding higher until $5. And then once uh, the market opened, that $5 level would not drop. So it's still a clear sign that institutions are covering their short. And then it took around maybe 15 or 20 seconds for the offers to lift, which kind of confused me, which is why I think that I was a little bit late on it because I was expecting the offers to just go straight from the open. Um, but once it did break like 505, 510, you can just see it go right to, to like 520 to basically go and limit up. I think that by watching this all the way up, that was the biggest reason why I was able to capture this short trade. So even though I didn't make as much P&L on the upside, actually watching the tape the whole way up was the only way for me to actually visualize when that turn occurred. Um, and this goes the same for any stock on SSR, like for example, these cruise lines or these airlines, like you really want to see a change in character. And that's not something that like you're going to be able to tell as much, you know, just by uh, coming in 20 minutes later and seeing the chart, you really want to see where like the buyers just kind of like gave up or where they were done. And by just watching the price action, uh, that can give you uh, your answer. Um, and just kind of uh, the overall uh, uh, change in character came when the offer stacked and the bids basically just uh, did not increase. I mean, uh, once you drop 10, uh, the offers were stacked in the, in the thousands, which would mean that for those offers to lift, you'd probably need nearly a million shares on the uh, for someone just to come and slap the offers. Um, so that would be, uh, you know, unlikely, uh, um, especially because like the size on the bid was so much smaller than that on the ask. And you can just see that every time that it would come down to the bid, the first reaction was that the size on the bid would drop and the size on the offers would rise. So very clear sign that sellers are in control and that the short covering rally is over. And just kind of what my trade review is, um, just kind of summarizing on the upside, I definitely should have been larger, I think, on each move um, in the uh, limit up. I think that just kind of thinking of the bigger picture risk reward would have let me have take or um, would have uh, let me take just like more size, just like realizing that. Um, so when you were going through, right, and you're trying yeah. to uh, discover, think about how much size I should be using, what was, you know, what was your first thought? Or what were you thinking? What was your mm. thought process? So for me, like these trades are, are um, uh, momentum trades. So like really I should not see the bid drop in any significant way. So for example, like when I started buying 530 or something, um, expecting that like limit up, I remember seeing how like the buyers took out 520. And for something that is in a momentum move, especially right in the first minute, in my mind, I'm only going to give this like 10, 15 cents, because if this is going to go limit up, we're not going to see the back and forth price action. We're going to see this go straight up. So just kind of for like my momentum trading style, I would much rather take much larger size. And then when I'm right, you know, I like just like really uh, kill the trade, possibly taking a few paper cuts. And then like, let's say, putting in more like medium size at let's say 530, 540 and giving it $5 or giving it $4, which is the uh, pre-market low. Uh, that just comes down to what, you know, everyone's trading style is. Um, and then and what would you say as far as the liquidity that you were see, seeing between, you know, the bid and the offer? It was, I mean, absolutely incredible. I mean, like the 
Uh, the spread was probably like no more than two, three cents. There was absolutely like no trouble getting filled because there were so many shares being traded. So like my worry was not that much about slippage. Like I'm sure that if like 520 fell, I'd probably be filled at like 515 at worst case scenario. So like that's like definitely something that's beneficial because I mean like many times in trading these these cruise lines, um, I definitely have taken some larger hits or just some other SSR names um, where like you'll see either the bid drop or like the offers lift and then you slip 25, 30 cents on a $15 stock and it can totally mess up your whole risk reward. So just like trading a stock that was so liquid definitely gives you some uh, peace of mind when trading it. Um, you know, just like many times like when trading a stock that's like less liquid and just from my personal experience, I would take off the trade too soon because I would almost be worried about being slipped. And then sometimes like that trade like, would actually work out. And then, uh, you know, I think back to, to myself that the reason why I did that was a sizing issue. So it's, so it was definitely a, a blessing to have this kind of liquidity for this great trading opportunity. Um, but yeah, no, so I definitely think that I could have been larger on the upside. I think that realizing just how big of a short cover was probable and realizing how strong that bid was would have let me actually um, get in bigger size. But now with this experience, I believe that, that like the next time I would be taking larger size. Um, as far as on the downside, um, I ended up getting two thirds of my maximum size that I could have gotten. And I'm, you know, I'm not sure if I would have gotten filled, uh, uh, you know, on like the full uh, or, or uh, you know, on that last serve because these were separate trades being at the 75.5 and the 85.5. Uh, the only way for me to have known would have been if, let's say, I put in like the extra like 50% on each order because I was slapping in uh, basically any chance that, that I can get once $10 broke. However, I think that maybe a little bit more awareness um, and putting in like, let's say my like max size into to my like default and being willing to take that risk on the very first execution would have been the slightly better move. I think that uh, uh, the reason why I was only in a third for each trade was because I wanted to actually see that the trade that was, you know, it was like working. So like once, uh, you know, I got in at 85 and then saw that it dropped to 75, that was kind of confirmation for me. But I think that if this were to set up again, I would definitely be looking to get in max size on the very first opportunity, just because I see what that like potential is. I mean, like when I put in this trade, I wasn't thinking that this would go back down straight to $7. To, to be honest with you, I, I was probably looking for it to go one limit down, then probably cover soon after that in the mid eights. So the fact that, you know, like this ended up going all the way down to $7, that extra third of a size would have been pretty sizable P&L wise. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, that's the trade. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB, train and trade well.